Shalom and uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining class. All our online students, thank you for joining class. Very good morning to some of you. I think it's very early in the morning for you all, but thank you for joining class. And also to our one and only in-person student, Jeffina. <laughs> and also uh, welcome to our e-learning students who will be listening to this uh, lecture later on. Uh, so last Tuesday, we began looking at uh, uh, Howard Gardner's theory of uh, multiple intelligence. Uh, and he identifies eight uh, distinct learning styles or intelligences. And uh, according to Howard Gardner, this theory of multiple intelligence uh, you know, uh, he says that individuals have varying degrees of uh, profi uh, proficiency in each of these uh, eight intelligences. Um, and he says that while everyone can possess all of these eight intelligences to some extent, um, of course, there is, you know, some specific combinations and strengths of these intelligences which vary from person to person so we will all have uh, you know we can excel in certain intelligences while uh, we can have an uh, average or lower proficiency in other intelligences or we can demonstrate an average or lower proficiency in in other intelligences but it's important that uh, you know we recognize uh, what are these um, you know, uh, distinct learning styles or intelligences and, um, you know, um, and nurture these diverse talents and strengths uh, in individuals across all of uh, these eight intelligences. So we uh, began uh, studying and looking at, uh, yeah, you can put it up. We began studying and looking at uh, the first one, which was the, linguistic uh, intelligence and then yeah we look logical or mathematical intelligence uh, today we'll uh, study uh, the musical intelligence uh, intelligences spatial bodily kinesthetic interpersonal uh, and intrapersonal intelligences okay so before we look at all of them we would um, uh, just pause for a word of prayer so can i ask any one of you to please lead us in prayer please anyone shall we pray dear heavenly father i want to thank you this morning for giving us opportunity to witness these wonderful days to learn at your feet thank you for every soul present here thank you all of our lecturer Thank you for the school management. Thank you for everyone, our family. Be that glorified in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit the teaching, the lecture into your hands. Lord, open our mind, open our brain, open everything that we may receive your word with thanksgiving. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, success. So uh, we'll look at uh, we looked at uh, linguistic intelligences. We also looked at uh, logical and mathematical intelligence. Um, last class, we'll uh, look at musical intelligence. So when we, uh, what what comes to your mind when you think about musical intelligences? Okay, they love songs. Okay. There is ability to compose songs and um, anything related to music, like poems, like uh, among others. Okay, thank you, Lubega. More inclined to music, musical skills, more sense, uh, more sen uh, very sensitive to uh, and skilled in the area of uh, music. Okay, playing instruments. Thank you, Divya. 
Yes, so in this intelligence, you know, basically relates to people who are sensitive and skilled in the area of music. You know, they have uh, a strong uh, musical uh, uh, key, uh, sense, a keen sense of uh, rhythm, uh, melody and uh, tone as well. And they enjoy listening to music, uh, playing instruments and uh, singing. Okay. So you can see people, uh, you know, when they are working, uh, uh, their headsets will be on and they will be listening to music and they will also at the same time uh, uh, be working. Uh, uh, or you, I don't know if you've noticed um, uh, young people or children, even when they are studying, you know, even if they're preparing for the exams, their headsets will be on, they'll be listening to uh, music and at the same time, uh, they are studying. Have you noticed people like that? Anyone here who does the same? Okay, Jeffina says she does. She listens to music and studies the same time, or you no, know, does some research. Any of uh, anyone else here listens to music at the same time? Can study, can work, can do things. Yes, I do. Okay. So you, uh, Jeffina and Success are, have more of a musical intelligence, okay? Subhashis as well. Uh, oh, Divya as well. Okay, that's nice. Uh, okay, Abu Bakr, okay, quite a lot of you. Uh, for me, I just can't listen to music and can't uh, work at simultaneously i need perfect silence i there should be absolutely no noise i love it when it's very quiet even when people are talking or you know there's some distraction of noise around my surrounding areas it really distracts me i just have to have perfect silence and um, i i i have i know children who also you know um, uh, listen to music and um, Oh, Divya says, okay, you listen to instrumental music. I can listen to instrumental music and music when I'm, uh, you know, going for my evening walks or, you know, when I'm uh, doing some chore at home. But when I have to use my mind to think or study or write or work, I can't uh, do two things at the same time. Uh, so I know children who even um, study, uh, you know, they write research papers, they are uh, doing their project or they're uh, studying for it, the exams and, you know, their headsets are on and they're listening to uh, music. I just can't comprehend how they can manage it, but that is how God has wired them. It's created them. We are also uh, different. Okay. Yeah. So this um, uh, musical intelligence, um, uh, those who have, uh, this kind of learning, they enjoy listening to uh, music, you know, playing instruments, they love singing. So what do you think can be the suggested activities in a children's church or, you know, uh, or in Sunday school for those who are musically inclined or have this kind of learning? What do you think we can do for them? Any thoughts? Okay, uh, so Jeffina is saying, um, uh, you know, uh, narrate the story to song. So we have various uh, songs which narrate uh, narratives of the Bible, also memory verse. Yes, yes, Lubega. I, I really think the 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 we can mix in some songs when we are preparing our lessons, and uh, we can also put in some musical instruments if they are there and guide them bring somebody who is also good in music to, to make sure that he plays music when they are there because depending on the age of learners for instance like when they are toddlers between three to five years once my those things are around there we can see them selecting them and then we get to know that this is their style of learning or this is their intelligence we we also need to make sure that there is a holistic way of teaching them to make sure that anybody who loves music can easily be identified. But once such things aren't there, it's relatively near to know, not knowing anything about them loving music. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lubega. Anyone else?
Okay, so Jeffina says we can have... Uh, Jeffina, why don't you put, uh, 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 you know, put on your microphone and speak so can everyone can hear you? Yeah. Uh, hope you can hear me, Pastor. Yes. Yeah. I just said that music can also be uh, an object lesson because I've seen some sermons uh, where they compare the six strings of guitar, uh, kind of something to the word of God, which which even excites me. And, uh, and I'm very sure it will definitely excite the kid. And in recent days, there are even uh, like uh, stand-up comedians who play music in the background and they and they keep narrating some things. But I think we should be really musically talented for that. But even that uh, excites some kind of music going in the background and, and they just make it uh, very like a, a fantasy kind of. They just bring them into that world of story, just getting their attention. And even that would be a good suggestion for the show. Yes. Thank you, Jeffina. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, but excuse me. Um, to me, music uh, it empowers me a lot spiritually. When I'm working, whether for example, if I'm in the office, if I'm in church office, I'm studying my Bible, I listen to the music, I quickly connect to heaven and the spirit. That also subject to the type of music someone listening to. For example, if I'm studying my word, if I'm studying the word of God, I listen to worship, not praises, because there's a difference between praises and worship. So once I'm listening to worship, and before you know, I'll be I'll be in Holy Spirit. So music is like it, it, it's like connection, connecting me to to the realm that I want to be. Yes, I will still study the Bible. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, so yes, so you can incorporate these ideas even when you are uh, preaching. You know, I I know of a, a very uh, a famous preacher here in Bangalore City, uh, who used to. Uh, uh, he's very good in po poetry, rap. So he he writes a lot of poetry and he uses that in his uh, message. You know, uh, uh, and it, it it really relates. It's re really nice, and he 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 sometimes uses it as uh, says it in rap style you know and has music in the background or he can just read it out as poetry but then he'll have uh, uh, some rhythm to it which is uh, which is really nice so i think you what you can do is uh, you know for uh, children who are um, with musical int intelligence you can start with worship you can end with worship you know, um, you can have memory verses, uh, which uh, are scripture and song. Uh, you can even have, uh, you know, um, uh, after you narrate the story, you can get them to see the uh, video. So the videos will have a lot of uh, music in the background as well. Uh, uh, you can, when you're having games, you can just, you know, or some activity, you can just play some, uh, you know, uh, instrumental music in the background. If you want to, you can do that. Um, you can also get them to, you know, um, uh, enact the skits or, you know, uh, uh, come in front, do some action songs, whatever, uh, which can um, uh, help children even you know, uh, memorize the uh, the memory verse. You can also get them to play some musical uh, instruments, have games which are more musically uh, inclined, uh, icebreakers, or you want to reinforce the lesson content, you can use uh, music. Uh, but, you know, uh, some of you are also pastors, so what you can do is, you know, you can even use poetry, which has... Uh, you know, certain rhythm, like, you know, this, I, I remember, the, I, I like this uh, this poem, which I learned way back in school, but it has a nice rhythm. It's like, 20 froggies went to school down beside a rushy pool, 20 little coats of green, 20 west, all white and clean. We must be in time, said they, first we study, then we pray. So you, you see the, uh, you see the uh, music, the rap style, you know, so uh, people who are musically inclined with this kind of learning uh, style you know will listen so you can use that even when you're preaching or um, 
maybe you can just stop when you're preaching you can just have a worship song or you're talking about a concept like forgiveness or compassion the grace of god the goodness of god the mercy of god you can just stop and you know have a song that um, uh talks about the goodness and the mercy of god and like success says you know the worship song would just immediately connect them to what you're saying to god's goodness or to his forgiveness and you know the spirit of god can uh, just move in a mighty uh, way okay so that's um, about musical intelligence um, any doubts anyone has before we move to the next one spatial intelligence okay anyone has uh, any thoughts you like to share on this Okay. Yes, Subega. I literally feel like saying something on musical intelligence. My dad was, uh, he, was he started one of the, the big musical, music agents in Kampala in between 1980s and 1990s. But I don't know what happened. Only when I was 10, he stopped it and then we started getting the beatings of our lives when he, he would hear you going into music you would get problems i remember one time i called him on a street day and uh, uh, i was one of the people presenting instead of thanking me when we got home i received the wonderful beatings and uh, then i decided not to sing again uh, when i was with him and I started really hating beating because I would remember the pain that I, I got that time. So, and I went to church, my mother is a pastor, and then they would force me to sing. And uh, I one time refused, she wasn't, she wasn't at church. And the sister reported me and chased me out of home when, uh, when singing started and I had refused to take until late. And the mom found me on the gate and asked, son, what's the problem? I said, Aunt Rhoda has told me not to be in the house. What did you do this time? I said, no, I refused to sing. And uh, my mother was like, okay, let's go. And uh, they went out with Aunt Rhoda. Nobody ever told me to sing again. And when I was in like senior six, we tried our level best and I made a group with the other guys. We were singing and when we were in the competition in Kampala, we did not become number one and we were number two then i started again hating singing because my dad told me if you're not the first you are the last and he taught me like that when i was young that when you're not number one you're always the last there is no any other number in life so i really when i'm listening to music i can get like one week when i'm in with all my shoes in music but once that week erupts I will let it tentatively hate singing. So what I'm saying is we should mind about our only problems we got in, in any career we wouldn't influence the, the kids in that same way. Because if we do, because of our passions and our hate, we will end up losing one of our would-be heaven shakers in the music. So anybody who is teaching me as a teacher, and I know once you call it you call you bring yourself into evangelism or when you bring yourself into the kingdom of god you end up needing all those forms of intelligence because you're going to meet people who have them in one way or the other so your individual bias would then be put into what you're teaching that's what i had to say thank you yes thank you uh, lubega for sharing i mean um uh, really appreciate you sharing about your uh, childhood days and uh, yeah I think um, if you still love music you're inclined to music and worship is a wonderful uh, way that we can really connect to God it just kind of worship uh, kind of you know uh, gives us a breakthrough from uh, the strongholds the oppression that we are facing the depression that we are going through the forces of darkness that are coming against us i believe that at those times when we really worship it just kind of opens up uh, 
uh, breaks all the strongholds and opens up for God's rule, reign, activity, his presence uh, to just flow through. Uh, and music and worship is so powerful. So just pray that, you know, um, God would heal you of um, what has happened in the past. And even as you've kind of noticed that, recognized it and seen how important it is to uh, to um, recognize that even when you, as you are in the teaching profession, and um, you know, minister to children who are musically inclined, but also for you, it would be good to uh, have God just heal you of uh, everything that has happened in the past. Just let go, heal, and uh, you know, open up your heart to the music and to worshiping God because that's just so powerful. Just uh, I believe that uh, so uh, worship is such a powerful way of. Um, you know, just receiving breakthroughs. I've received many breakthroughs uh, just listening to worship songs. And we know the difference when we listen to worldly, secular uh, love songs and when we listen to worship, the difference it makes. I know the difference because when I was in my in my younger days, when, you know, before I was born again, I listened to a lot of, you know, like Backstreet Boys and all of those, just love that music and some love songs and kind of depresses you sometimes, even when you are going through a challenging, difficult time. But I've noticed when you listen to worship uh, at times when you're going through really distressing, difficult uh, times or... Uh, feeling lonely, you're feeling down, uh, worship just kind of lifts you. It's just like those words just can come like rhema words, can just come like rain falling on your parched uh, heart, your broken heart can just heal and um, restore. So, yeah, thank you for sharing that and we we'll keep you in prayer. Yes. Yes, Divya. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add... Uh, one thing that I've noticed uh, regarding uh, the role of music, uh, especially it becomes very um, prominent during uh, VBSs, uh, right? Like vacation Bible classes. And um, uh, in here, uh, during the summer uh, holidays, uh, uh, the kids will have VBS in many, many places because we'll have uh, Bible study groups, church groups and all those. So they'll have a couple of uh, VBSs. And in, in sometimes it so happens that uh, two churches will be having the same theme for VBS. So if it is the same theme, then uh, they get to hear those songs, um, you know, so many times. And it becomes uh, so much ingrained in their hearts because I remember last time it was on spiritual warfare uh, that Ephesians 6, 10 to 14. Uh, so they had uh, the, the VBS theme that they had uh, was having a lot of songs based on that portion. So uh, kids, uh, kids uh, uh, completely memorize those uh, verses because uh, they have made those into songs. And um, usually uh, when they uh, uh, take part in the VBS, uh, these songs, we, we do have access to these songs on YouTube and things like that. So we sometimes keep playing them at home. And throughout the year, uh, they would be listening to these songs. And uh, yeah, it, it, it really helps actually, um, because it, even if they remember, uh, they, they do not remember what they learned during those five days, uh, they remember these songs and they, these songs bring out the basic truths concept very, very nicely. So yeah, it, it has a huge role to play. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yes. Thank you for sharing. I think that's uh, really nice. And I think some of you, uh, you know, who are musically talented, you can uh, put uh, a good song, uh, just take scripture and just, uh, you know, add music to it and uh, sing it and just put it on YouTube. It'll just benefit so many of uh, uh, them who find it difficult to memorize, but musically inclined and they can uh, just learn. For me, I can, uh, you know, I, I learn uh, uh, words in uh, in songs really quick and faster uh, rather than memorizing scripture, you know, just like that. So I remember once we had, uh, when I was in Bible college, we had somebody come and uh, teach us how to write songs. And I attended uh, that seminar. And actually in our group, we were uh, supposed, to, all of us were put in groups and we had to sit and um, uh, 
you know, um, uh, write songs. So we used one of the uh, psalms, and I I remember we uh, we kind of never you know get, got that uh, uh, produced, and we there was no YouTube and all in those days. So, but I remember this. I still remember the song. You know, um, I lift up my eyes to you, whose throne is in heaven, and as the eyes of a slave looks to the hands of their master, and as the eyes Eyes of a slave looks to the hands of their mistress. So our eyes look up to the Lord our God till he shows us his mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. So, you know, have mercy on us. Oh Lord, so basically we just took out these uh, these lines from a psalm and we just wrote the song. Uh, uh, it's like now more than I think uh, twenty, yeah, two uh, more twenty four years since uh, twenty plus years since we uh, uh, we wrote this song, and I still remember this. So so when I'm praying, sometimes I can I can uh, use the scripture in song which I learned because it's basically we just pulled it out of a psalm and we just added uh, music to it. We hardly had around uh, uh, less than forty five minutes, and we did this. So those of you who are music skilled and inclined, you know, you can uh, do this, and you know. Uh, uh, memory verses, familiar scripture passages, uh, like uh, like uh, Divya was saying, you know, uh, in Ephesians chapter six, um, and other scripture passages, Psalm one, Psalm one twenty one, put it in into music so you know children can learn. And we don't know how long we're going to have the scripture in our hands, but uh, just learning all of this through song can, you know, uh, uh, just help uh, children to remember. It and you know memorize scripture well. Yes. Anyone else has anything more to add before we move on? Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, spatial intelligence. Okay. Uh, so spatial intelligence. Any on what do you understand by spatial intelligence? already up on the screen <laughs> is there no worries okay so spatial intelligence is basically uh, the ability for a person to understand and work with things uh, which you see in your mind or in the world uh, around you you know it means uh, being good at perceiving shapes patterns and how things fit in together in a in a specific space so if you sh you know for people who have uh, 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 spatial intelligence you just give them uh, uh, a, a chart paper or a canvas sheet or a you know uh, some craft materials and they can just uh, you know create uh, something out of uh, what you have just material that you've given to them or you can just put them in an open uh, in an empty room and you know they will visualize how uh, things should be in that room or if you uh, get them to you know enact a skit there will be people who will be able to uh, do the props very well so basically they're good at perceiving shapes patterns and how things uh, fit together in space um, they, they can also uh, easily imagine what something uh, would look like from different angles, uh, how different uh, you know, pieces um, uh, fit together. And, uh, you know, uh, so they might be very good at drawing maps, you know, uh, um, uh, finding locations, uh, solving problems or puzzles. Uh, and also creating things, uh, craft, uh, art and craft, they'll be very good. Um, uh, they will be good at, uh, you know, or excellent or excel in tasks like um, doing puzzles, mazes, you know, creating the uh, diagrams, uh, and just basically designing or organizing uh, physical uh, spaces, okay? So what are some of the activities that we can um, suggest or think of for, uh, uh, people with spatial intelligence. Any thoughts, ideas? How can you incorporate this in your teaching um, lesson, the lesson that you're teaching or in the activities that you're uh, you doing? Like saving puzzles. 
Okay, yeah, you can give them uh, puzzles related to uh, the, you know, a text that you're teaching them, the concept that you're teaching them, the topic, or you can even get them uh, to solve the puzzle to find out what the memory verse is. That also will be very interesting for them. Uh, anything else? Imaginative composition. Imaginative Sorry? composition, for instance. Imaginative composition, I, I can give an example. Like uh, if David and uh, the issue of David and Goliath, there is a way we can tell them how do you think he so and so prepared for this. In so doing, they will start imitating, thinking of what might have happened and what did not happen. With the right guidance, you're helping them to go. Yes, you're right. Problem solving. So you can give them, um, ask them questions. You know, what do you think David would have done? What do you think he should have done? What do you think, uh, you know, Bartimaeus should have done when nobody was taking him to Jesus? Uh, they, they didn't sense the need for him to go to Jesus. What do you think Zacchaeus should have done when he could, he shot, he couldn't see Jesus? You know, so these People will come up with you no know, problem solving, how they can, uh, uh, what they should do, how uh, things can be uh, done. Okay, yes. Uh, we can also use visual aids, you know, use uh, maps. So suppose you're talking about uh, the Israelites journey to the wilderness from where they went, where they stopped. These uh, children with this learning styles will be interested in, um, uh, in the maps that you show them. So you can highlight the route. You can show them Paul's missionary journey or Jesus, you know, from which town he went to which town. Uh, and all of that. If you're talking about Jericho, you can show them in the map. Uh, so they'll be very, very interested. The, you, they are also interested in diagrams and pictures. So you can show them. Nowadays, we have laptops. We have uh, LCD projectors. We can just project it on the screen, you know, uh, diagrams and pictures and charts. You know, you can use charts to illustrate uh, biblical stories, uh, Bible stories, concepts, uh, locations. You know, uh, you can also, uh, uh, you know, incorporate uh, models, building, get them to build models uh, of biblical structures, for example, Noah's Ark, you know, the Tower of Babel. So you can say, um, so who would like to suggest how Noah's Ark really looked? you know, with all those dimensions. So they will come up quickly and just draw. Or the Tower of Babel, how do you think uh, it looked? Or, um, you know, uh, um, we, you're talking about the tabernacle. You can just get them to draw it, you know. Um, they're also good at uh, puzzle solving. So puzzles related to biblical themes, you can encourage them to solve them. They'll be very, very interested. Also, uh, you can encourage these students to express their understanding of biblical concepts through art and craft uh, projects. Uh, basically provide them some material for drawing, painting, you know, uh, craft work. And they will be, uh, you know, they'll come up with creative ideas um, uh, with visual, visual representations of uh, the stories or the ideas that you have uh, told them. So even have game activities, you know, um, uh, uh, based on um, the, what you're teaching them, the concept that you're teaching them or the narrative that you're telling them. Also, you can use storytelling techniques for this uh, spatial intelligence that appeal to visual learners, such as, you know, vivid descriptions. You can give them about the entire story, like I, I narrated last um, week, you know, about how uh, this teacher narrated to us about that five loaves and the two fishes. You can, you know, have dramatic retellings. You can have multimedia uh, presentations. You can incorporate videos, uh, slideshows that depict uh, biblical narratives and are visually compelling, uh, which will help these kind of learners' spatial uh, intelligence. Okay. We'll move on to the next one. Um, before we move on to the next one, anyone has any questions? Anything you'd like to share, say? No? Okay. The next one is bodily kinesthetic uh, intelligence. Okay. So when you think of bodily kinesthetic intelligence, what comes to your mind? Any thoughts? Bodily kinesthetic intelligence. Anyone? 
Any thoughts, any ideas? Exercise, yes. They love for games, sports activities. Yes, Divya? Yeah, I was about to say sports activities. Okay. What else? It's just for sports activities. They uh, anything else they like? Dance, choreography, yes. Basically, uh, physical activities. You know, so this intelligence uh, relates to the ability to control one's body movements and handle um, objects. Uh, skillfully. So these are uh, uh, children or people who learn by doing things. Okay. Uh, they're constantly mo uh, moving around, constantly doing things, constantly fidgeting with their hands. So basically, uh, they, the ability to control one's body movements in handling uh, objects skillfully, uh, you know, uh, uh, people with this kind of uh, intelligence, such as bodily kinesthetic, uh, they're physically uh, coordinated. So when you have an activity, you want somebody to do something, you know, they'll be the first ones to jump up. Okay. So if you, you're holding a picture, they would want to come in. Uh, hold it up for you, help you to hold it. Or if you're doing um, a demonstration or an object lesson, uh, they would come quickly near your table and they would, you would not even ask them for help. They would just kind of take it and give it to you, you know. Or uh, if you're doing group discussions, they'll be the first one to jump up and stand up or a games or activity, you know, they'll be the, the excited ones. So, uh, they're physically coordinated, they enjoy sports, they enjoy physical um, activities because they basically learn through movement and touch, okay? So if you uh, say who can, um, uh, you know, who's the tallest and shortest in the class, they will stand up and, you know, who wants to be uh, Lazarus, who wants to act like um, uh, David, who wants to act like uh, Goliath, you know, they'll be the first ones to uh, jump up and do all of these uh, activities, okay? So um, what do you think are the suggested activities that we can do for bodily kinesthetic intelligence or how can we incorporate them in our teaching methodology, in our lesson plan? What are the things that we need to plan for this kind of intelligence? Any thoughts? Use of role play in lessons. Yes, thank you. Role play in lessons. Yes. You can get them to help out in the object lesson. Or if you're having an attention getter, you can get them involved. If the attention getter is some a small skit, you can get them, tell them in advance. They will all, they'll just be ready uh, to uh, uh, do these attention getters, these small skits. You can ask them to even enact uh, the narrative that you are have uh, just uh, narrated to them. Or if you can, you know, you want them to do role plays, then uh, they're very, very good, OK? Also, uh, you know, dance, choreography, uh, you know, uh, models, experiments, everything that, you know, these kind of uh, children will be very, very um, uh, excited. You would also can give them a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, role play activities that we said, also engage them, uh, you know, uh, in uh, doing skits and using props, costumes, gestures, you know, that they'll be very, very excited doing. Uh, provide opportunities for students to create crafts or artwork related to the lesson, to the theme. It can also be, uh, you know, building models for biblical structures. Uh, games, of course, they will love games. Um, you know, also um, encourage them to participate in a dramatic uh, performance and skits uh, based on biblical narratives um, where they can, you know, physically embody the character, the events of the story, uh, which will help, um, you know, uh, understanding or, uh, you know, uh, the, the character, portraying the character to the rest of them in the class and also help in the retention of the uh, material or the content that you have uh, taught them, okay? Uh, you can also use demonstrations um, uh, to help 
these kind of learners uh, with this kind of intelligence, you know, uh, and uh, use visuals to explain abstract concepts. Um, uh, and also you can help get their help to demonstrate, uh, uh, you know, concepts of forgiveness through role playing activity. Uh, you can also incorporate music uh, uh, movements in your lesson. And these ones will be very excited uh, to do all the actions, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you just get up, up in front and you just say, okay, I'm teaching you a new song. Okay, you listen to it and you all, you all, you, you, you are responsible for, you know, doing the choreography and the actions. And you'll just find them immediately on the spot, you know, doing it and they'll just... Uh, love that you can also take them out for field trips and outdoor activities which they will really like you know um, uh, which will help them connect uh, what you have taught with the real world in the re in the real world context and also will help them to engage uh, their senses through hands-on uh, experiences okay because they love to do they're not just listeners they're not just quietly uh, sitting and listening but they love to do what uh, they have learned they want to put it into action okay anything else you can think of for bodily kinesthetic intelligence okay uh, we'll move on to the next one uh, interpersonal uh, intelligence what comes to your mind when we think of interpersonal intelligence interpersonal itself suggests it means how a person does know how to take him him or herself within himself Intra, it is all about a person in within him or herself how he manages these things within him or herself especially when it comes to emotions how to get infused with his or her experiences and all the education he gets around us how he interprets and how he reacts on that thank you okay thank you lubega anyone else interpersonal i mean the word itself suggests any thoughts? Inter. I thought it is intra. No, I, I didn't say intra. I said inter, interpersonal. I N T E R. How a person relates, how a person relates with, relates with others. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lubega. Yes. Uh, so this basically this intelligence involves understanding and interacting effectively with uh, others around them. So uh, individuals, uh, you know, with an uh, interpersonal intelligence are good at understanding people's uh, emotions. Uh, they can be, they can easily motivate others. Uh, you know, they can understand other people's intentions very well. Okay. Um, and they are people who will excel in group activities because they basically enjoy working along with uh, others. Uh, they are skilled in communication. Uh, they're very friendly. Uh, they empathize with others. Um, and so that really connects them with the people. Um, so group activities, you know, getting them to organize things, getting them to help others uh, will be really very uh, good because they will enjoy it. So what do you think can be uh, suggested uh, activities for this kind of learners or how you can incorporate this kind of intelligence or these kind of learners in your teaching? Any thoughts? You can have uh, group projects, you know, uh, games where they play, cooperative games where they play with everybody else. You can also have role playing uh, scenarios, role plays, where, uh, you know, they will be able to empathize, uh, you know, portray what each person will feel, what they're going through, uh, through their actions, through their words. 
um, you can also um, you know organize skits um, where the children will act out uh, scenarios uh, where they're able to communicate uh, what the person is going through uh, you know and um, help uh, the audience kind of understand the different perspectives or the different dimensions of uh, the emotions or what is happening really in that uh, scenario okay and um, so these uh, kind of learners, they will uh, love group discussions where, you know, they will share their thoughts, they will share their perspectives and insights on uh, uh, the lesson material, you know, and they will also engage in a meaningful uh, uh, dialogue uh, and exchanging of ideas with the uh, the people in the group so they'll be the ones who are really talking uh, and the uh, sharing content and sharing their thoughts they're sharing their perspectives and um, ideas um, you know you can also get them to uh, uh, you know uh, pray for others who are going through challenges in the class because interpersonal right so uh, suppose uh, some people are going through some problems, difficulties, or you want them to you know, just uh, uh, pray, you can, uh, these interpersonal uh, kind of learners will remember to pray because they empathize with the people, they understand. Um, uh, also, if um, you are finding some, some uh, child very challenging in the class and uh, they are basically teenagers and they open up to their own peer group you can you know uh, you know get the, uh, this interpersonal kind of learners to uh, relate more uh, talk with them find out what is really happening with the other child if you have some new child in your class who's come newly then you can put in a word to these interpersonal uh, intelligent uh, learners uh, to befriend them to talk to them to get to know them to make them feel more um, uh, you know welcomed in the class um, and also build a friendship and a rapport with them you know they will uh, do a great job at that also um, you know um, uh, give them tasks which will involve problem solving which will really help so suppose uh, uh, the class is not agreeing on something so you can have these people to discuss with the rest of them and come up with uh, you know problem uh, with the uh, 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 with uh, ideas so you know uh, uh, this could involve a group project, problem solving challenges or interactive games you can have for them, uh, which will uh, require teamwork and communication. They will also be very, very good. Also, they'll be good at role playing activities, kits uh, where uh, they take on different roles and interact with each other as characters in the Bible story, you know, and uh, it uh, this allows them to explore um, the dynamics of the social dynamics and also practice empathy uh, and understanding okay um, also these kind of learners will be very good for community outreach basically if you want to take them for uh, to orphanages to old age homes where they can help they can pray for they can uh, uh, you know uh, minister uh, this uh, kind of learners will be uh, will do a great uh, job and also they will be ones who will motivate and encourage others to uh, you know to empathize to minister effectively so if you're taking children for outreach uh, make sure that in the you put them into groups uh, that is what we do when we take our children for outreach you know whether it's to um, old age home or whether to um, uh, 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 orphanage we put them into groups and we say hey when we go to the orphanage uh, these are the people you are going to minister to so we give them the names in advance we share their needs what is it needs we get the needs from uh, the the people who run the home and we say this is a need of this person so suppose uh, my group is going to minister to somebody called Kamala uh, then we say this is Kamala's needs this is what she's going through so the children pray and then when they go there they they find out who Kamala is and they go and minister and they're praying exactly and speaking into her uh, life so what you can do is you can have 
uh, in the various groups, you can have these interpersonal uh, learners. Uh, they will be able to empathize, uh, sympathize, and they will just be wonderfully, they wonderfully, they'll just reach out and uh, minister to um, the people that uh, you are going to uh, uh, minister to, or they can, because they foster a sense of empathy, compassion, uh, and will also able to address the real world issues that uh, is happening around them. Okay, we'll stop here. We'll go for a break and then uh, we'll come back and continue. Thank you, everyone.